The German crowd here in Mulheim getting their first chance to see a German in action this evening. They've already seen Jihan Arta, their man, lose this afternoon. He couldn't get past Jason Lovett, went all the way to a deciding leg. They'll be hoping that Christian Serta can manage to get the job done, but he's up against it. Against Mensor Suljevic, the gentle, a man who is safely ensconced inside the top 32 in the world rankings. He's from Vienna. Certainly not rapid, but as he made his way to the stage there, through the dry ice, I almost saw my co-commentator <laughs> Ron Malarkey well up, tears in his eyes, an emotional moment, as one of his favourite players in the world of darts took to the stage for the first time this weekend. Yeah, my affiliation with Solovic goes back to Hildesheim when I was mistaken for him at checking at the hotel. <laughs> Heaven knows how that happens. <laughs> He was also the first player I bumped into today as well, so the omens are good. In Hildesheim, he reached the semis, and I wouldn't put it past him to have a similar run here this weekend as well. And let's not forget, Dan, he comes into this tournament on the back of a terrific run to the last eight of the world match play in Blackpool, where he beat not only Terry Jenkins, but of course the reigning world champion and the Premier League champion, Gary Anderson, uh, before that 16-11 uh, defeat by James Wade as well. And, you know, on his day, He's more than a match for absolutely anybody. Got his fair share of backers here tonight as well. And, you know, he's not everybody's cup of tea, but he is a very effective and at times a very ruthless player as well. Serta certainly has his work cut out here this evening. And Sulevich with the advantage of throwing first as well. Yeah, this is a man who cannot be underestimated. Mensor Sulevic, well, as he proved at the match play, as he said, he can beat anyone, he beat the world champion. And he had another good run, or another good payday, I should say, at the UK Open in March as well, where he reached the last eight too. Well, he had back-to-back -back quarter final appearances on the Pro Tour leading up to the match play. It is absolutely no surprise that he went to the match play and played as he did. It was... Uh, a little bit of a shock to Gary Anderson, it has to be said. I just think he's one of the most underestimated, underestimated players on the circuit. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Well, in this tournament last year, not that it was held here, but it was still the European Darts Trophy, Michael Smith went on to win. It was over in East Germany in uh, Leipzig. Mm. Mensur Solovic <laughs> went out in round one, but he went out in the game of the tournament to Willie O'Connor. Both men averaged 104. It was quite a stunning game of darts, and he would have beaten anybody else that day, Mensur Solovic. Is this the first 180 of the match? No, it's not. But it wasn't to be on that occasion. Willie O'Connor. Himself to play all the Pro Tour events. You know, he's, at times he's picked and choose, chosen in previous years or which ones he'll come over and play, but he's been a regular fixture at the Pro Tour and it's paying dividends. He finds himself 28 in the world rankings. That gets him into... TV tournaments as well with his runs that he's had. Such as that semi-final appearance on the European Tour this year. And he is a tricky, tricky customer. Treble 17 gets it, looking at the ball. Is he going to go for it? Oh, he did go for it. And he made contact as well. He didn't need to go for it, but Mensal Suljevic, the shameless showboater. Well, that's the sort of ambitious player he can be at times. Why wouldn't he have a go with Serta stranded? There are two ways of looking at that sort of situation. But Sulevic is in a good position here, nevertheless, to take the opening leg, or at least he was. He's uh, just been stopped in his tracks momentarily. Well, he still is, because you can see Christian Serta at the back of the stage shaking his head, because elementary maths would tell him that leave it 1899 when you've got 261 doesn't leave you on a finish and so he never gave himself a chance to get a ton 40 there it's left him 22 so Christian Surt is going all kinds of weird ways and Mensor Sulevic now He's looking at double six yeah Sulevic doing likewise as well here but he gets over the finishing line eventually the characteristic raising of the arms to acknowledge that it was perhaps a little bit harder than it needed to be in that opening leg, but he's there, he's got the first leg on the board. As he said, Dan Jihan Artuk fell by the wayside earlier. 
So three Germans flying the flag here now. Max Hopp is on stage later, so too Martin Schindler as well. Yeah, Max Hopp, one of the games of the opening round against the five-time world champion Raymond van Barneveld. Can't wait for that. Yeah, going to be an absolute belt, I think. Barney, though, made to work hard in his qualifying route last night as one of the European qualifiers, even though he is a five-time world champion, still had to come through qualifying for this. No privileges for Barney here. Yeah, taken to a deciding leg by the Russian Alexei Kudlochnikov. But he made it through. Christian Surtout had to come through the qualifiers as well, the host nation qualifiers, of course. So of Alexander Tauber, Andre Masurka and Thomas Zeyler, shorty, 6'4", one of the established names of German darts. It is the second time we've seen Christian on the European Tour. He did come through in Dusseldorf, lost in round one to Johnny Haynes. He tried qualifying for Dusseldorf last year as well, didn't make it through. But other than that, he has no experience of PDC darts. So he's tried to qualify for three tournaments, he's made two of them. This being the second one. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step though, Dan. And he's uh, looking to make the... Uh, most of his opportunities here, having qualified and having come through qualifying last night. Pretty much level pegging in this leg, as Serta looks to get a leg on the board. It's got to be Trevor 14, hasn't it? And it is, and it's tops. Almost. Might get another chance if Sulevic lets him. Little twiddle of the thumbs there, the characteristic, or one of the many characteristic trademarks of Menzel Sulevic's style of play. Have we seen the chalk yet? If not, we will do soon. And it's oh. left his favourite. He loves double 14. <laughs> That's one of the reasons why. Sometimes you just can't miss it. Yeah, a rueful look from Christian Serta. I think he knew as soon as Sulevic set up that double 14 opportunity that it was game over, or at least leg over. I don't care, it, you can put him up there with Taylor and Van Gogh wherever you want. When it comes to hitting double 14, Mensor Sulevic is the boy. You could put him up against Van Gogh and you could turn the lights off as we saw this morning, <laughs> yeah. oh sorry, this afternoon as well, and he'd still nail it. There's an idea. Darts in the dark. I'm, uh, I'm not sure as a spectator sport. <laughs> We'll put it to the powers that be at the PDC later, see what they say. Could be a bit of mileage in it. How much mileage is there in Christian Surter's campaign here? Kicks things off with a 57, but, uh, well, that sailed off. Sulevich looking to ram home his advantage here. Comes south to the 17th, and he... Pulls off another double, uh, sorry, treble 20. And he's in a very, very good position for a 3 0 lead here, Mensur. Potentially 11 dart leg on his own throw. Oh, how about that? Double 17. Is he going to. No, he might as well. Obviously, he's going to go for it now. Just the way he hesitated there, I thought he was going to think about splitting it but well I would have thought it'd be six for double 14 for Mensor but he did stop and think about it but he then did. he went for it anyway like Maybe I say, he just wants to boost his average <laughs> with Serta out at sea on 274 but he's well half that now it's six for double 14 yeah and we say he doesn't miss it he does not miss it He's missed it. <laughs> First time for everything, Dan. Surely not oh, the second he's time. Not missed it on that visit. No. That still counts. He's just toying with you. That's what he does. Keeping the crowd on their toes. There's the chalk. That's come out now. That's another trademark. Wow. Terrific atmosphere inside, by the way, in the RWE Sport Hall. The lights are on this evening. No problems uh, with the lighting tonight. Big crowd in here to watch three German players in action. There you go. It's like Jurassic Park, except with a load of drinking Germans rather than a Tyrannosaurus. Impressive first nine average from Mensa. 
Yeah, just uh, only 30% on his doubles. That's what's dragging that overall oh. average down. Christian Surtis only had one uh, double so far. And that's what's keeping his up to an extent, yeah. Well, a chance here for Sulevich to wrestle the throw from uh, Serta. Only 20 behind, well, he's level now. Yeah, Mensor, as well as playing on the Pro Tour, now really dedicated himself to playing all the events available to him. He is involved in the, the Super League in uh, the Eastern European Division, although he had to miss one of the rounds of games because he got so far in the match play. Made the quarterfinals, had to miss a round of games. He's still ranked second in the table, I'm led to believe, behind uh, Roby John Rodriguez. He darts like this, it does it. Oh, no. oh it's on the 70. Why not? Why not? And he'll be back for 3 14 I think, unless Christian Turter takes out the 160, and he's just the wrong side of that wire. Yeah, I would have thought that will be uh, Sulevich's route to glory here. Well, unless he fancies mixing it up, but I doubt it very much. Let's see what he does. There it is. 3 double 14 for a 4-zip lead. And as sure as night follows day, he nails it at the first time of asking this time around. And Sulevich is now two legs away from a place in the second round where he would face, if he does get through, just in Pipe tomorrow. Pipe is in the practice room as we speak. Just seen him having a brief chat with Peter Wright, who's also here this weekend. Sulevich Pipe. Maybe an 11 leg thriller. Can you imagine the tension? Well, Pipe won't fancy that. Justin Pipe, a former finalist on the European Tour this year, of course. Made it to the final in Venray. Where he lost heavily, well, the heaviest possible margin, 6 0 against Van Gerwen. Yeah, Michael Van Gerwen was not going to be stopped at the Dutch Darts Masters. Not with his home crowd behind him. Justin Pipe, though, just poised dangerously outside the world's top 16. Raymond van Barneveld sat in that 16th position at the minute. Now he has qualified for this and he's qualified for the European Tour in Austria, but with only four events ahead of the Grand Prix, uh, Grand Prix he'll just be a little bit wary about mm. the likes of Pipe, who could be running up on the rails, looking to nick his last spot in there. Justin Pipe will qualify by right anyway for the uh, for the Pro Tour order of merit. Peter Wright, by the way, plays the winner of our next match tomorrow. Gerwin Price and Andy Jenkins up next after this one. Gerwin Price has had a terrific time of it of late as well. well another absolutely stunning performance from him at the match play. Very much like Mensor putting yeah. some great stuff. But Gerwin Price's defeat of Adrian Lewis at the match play was frankly astonishing. Mm. Really, really announced himself. As a, as a player who can mix it with, with the yeah, top boys. definitely. 96 for Mensor Sulevich. Finds the treble he wanted. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant from Sulevich. He just maps it out so well. 96. There are so many options with 96 mm. as well, but he just wants to get it down to that double 14. and Four consecutive legs he's won it on now. Yeah. It's almost like the rest of the board doesn't exist when he gets down to that uh, situation. Don't need it. There you go. Four out of five on double 14. Told you this lap can hit it. He can't hit anything else at the minute, but he doesn't need to. Still just the one dart for Christian Serta. Averaging 87. For Mensor's 95. And it may be another first round exit for the German. Oh. Admonishing himself there, Sulevich, for that uh, final dart there. Could be in position here for our first whitewash of the weekend. Rabbi John Rodriguez came close earlier against James Hubbard in the final match of the afternoon session. Sulevich, though, on the verge here of a 6-0 win against Christian Serta. That would leave two Germans in the tournament. 
Is that an, an improvement in the microphone for Russ Bray? It seems to be a little bit quiet and then suddenly it's kicked into life. Or is it just my hearing? 44. And so you require 170. Dan doesn't know what I'm talking about. Maybe it's, maybe it's my headphones. Anyway, doesn't Hang matter. On. Hang, Hang on. on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Chris, you only require 170. Fractions, fractions away from the biggest checkout of the lot to win the match 6 0. That Sertor. would have been the icing on the cake of what has been a really good performance by Sulevic. I know he's only up against Christian Serta, but you can only beat what's put in front of you. Wow, and Sulevic five. has looked very, very impressive today. And so you require 25. This should get the job done. Double eights for a 6 0 victory. Double four, champagne on ice here for Mensur, and there it is. Mensur well, say what you like about Mensur Sulevich, but at times he is a class act, and he was far too good for Christian Serta there. Another German falls by the wayside, but it's Mensur Sulevich, the quarter-finalist of the world match play, who goes through to face Justin Pipe in the second round tomorrow. Our first whitewash of the weekend. Watch out for Mensur, he could make another big impression here in Mulheim. Terrific stuff from him. We'll hear from him in due course. A reminder that on the way we've got Andy Jenkins against another quarter finalist in Black Bull. So, it's Gerwin Price. Let's hear now from your latest winner at the RWE Sport Halle, Mensor Slovic. Also in Runde 2 steht. Und Christian scheidet auch hier in Mülheim in der ersten Runde aus. Aber er hat mir heute Nachmittag noch erzählt, er wird dranbleiben, er will dieses Jahr eigentlich nur nutzen, um so ein bisschen zu testen und ab dem nächsten Jahr möchte Christian Söte dann so richtig angreifen. Und das heißt natürlich mit dem ganz großen Ziel, einmal in den Alexandra Palace zu kommen, einmal bei der Weltmeisterschaft mit dabei zu sein. Also Applaus für Christian Söte. Eine wichtige Erfahrung für ihn. Er ist es nicht gewohnt, vor so vielen Zuschauern zu spielen. Wenn so in so einem Match auch einfach ein Vorteil für dich, dass du inzwischen auch die Erfahrung hast, du genau weißt, was sich hier oben erwartet und wie das funktioniert. Ja, wenn wir ein richtiges Spiel machen und die Checks kommen, dann ist egal, ob die Publikum dahinter ist oder nicht. Ist immer gut, wenn Publikum dahinter steckt, aber da muss man aber wirklich gut spielen, sonst bringt gar nichts. Ich glaube, ich sage das immer wieder, wenn wir beide uns danach Siegen unterhalten. Ich habe auch den Eindruck, auch dass heute ist so ein Match, wo du einfach zeigst, dass du inzwischen Top 30 bist, dass das für dich schon so ein Erfolg ist, mit dem du auch irgendwie den du selber erwartest und du wirst deinen Erwartungen auch problemlos gerecht. Das sieht viel, viel leichter aus als vor einem Jahr, möchte ich fast mal sagen. Da waren das noch ganz andere Partien in der ersten Runde. Ja, ich habe mir früher immer schwer getan, aber jetzt ist ja mit den Erfahrungen, mit jeder Woche in deinem Turnier, Du musst wirklich viel leichter, das schaut immer leicht aus, aber das ist wirklich nicht leicht. Man muss wirklich jeden Tag fünf, sechs Stunden trainieren, sonst bringt gar nichts. Wenn du zur European Tour kommst, hast du das Ziel, das Turnier zu gewinnen oder ist das Ziel der Sonntag oder wie, wie, wie gehst du daran? Wenn ich den Turnier gewinne, dann gehe ich in Pension, dann verspreche ich euch. Okay, wir nehmen dich beim Wort. Wenn er das Turnier gewinnt, geht Mensur Suljovic in Rente. Wir sind gespannt. Also sehen wir morgen natürlich wieder den Gentle Menzo Suljovic aus Wien. Match Nummer 3.